Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be comparing different watercolor paints using this wonderful pigment PR101 which is red iron oxide. Red iron oxide can give incredibly different results according to the treatment. So we will be comparing both paints that use it pure, then mixed in uh, with other pigments in convenience uh, watercolor paint. Let's start swatching and thanks for watching. We will start with uh, watercolor paints that only use one pigment, PR101 single pigment paints. Some of these paints will be very opaque and other ones are going to be transparent. It depends very much on how they are treated and prepared. Then we will swatch some paints that use PR1 as an ingredient mixed, mixed with other pigments. To make sure that we verify the opacity, I have put a black line using a Sharpie. Let's start with Rembrandt, which is one of my favorite brands. Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red. As the as the name says, it's going to be transparent. Transparent oxide red, it only uses 101. It's light fastness is one. So it's very light fast pigment. I will just put some here. This is slightly orangey. And it's the first time that I use this pigment. Uh, I just bought it. Rembrandt has uh, wonderful colors that are very unique. Uh, they have a very good price point. They are from uh, Netherlands, so they're very easy to find here in Italy because it's Europe. And uh, I have a soft spot for uh, everything which is made in Netherlands, which is uh, Dutch, because my son studies in the Netherlands, so I feel uh, a bond with the Netherlands. So this is uh, very beautiful. It's almost a burnt sienna, but um, I will uh, surely put it in my go-to palette. I have a palette uh, with uh, paint pour from uh, tubes of different brands, uh, and this Rembrandt uh, transparent oxide red is really a beautiful color. I have the feeling that uh, there are some brands that have a burnt sienna made with PR01 that is going to be very similar. But let's go on. Now we, now we swatch Indian red made by Paul Rubens. I will wet slightly the paper to see if... Uh, the flow is better because usually Indian red uh, doesn't have an excellent flow. So let me just put some here. Mm, there is some uh, binder separation. It happens with uh, Paul Rubens. You see the beautiful uh, red uh, of this uh, paint and undertone. I have put maybe too much on the paper. Indian red is one of my favorite colors. Let, um, let's uh, water it down. Actually, it's very easy to water down. And uh, the color is beautiful. It's really beautiful. Okay, this Indian red is 
wonderful but um, for Ruben sometimes it has a big shift when dry so let's wait until they dry I think I will put some more Rembrandt uh, transparent oxide red because I don't think the comparison is fair I will just add some paint to make the comparison more fair And yes, I think that uh, still is more transparent this one compared to the Indian red by Paul Rubens, which is uh, not too opaque, I find. And uh, actually, the Indian red by Paul Rubens has a mention of uh, transparent by the producer. So, it's correct, it is transparent. Let's go to Lucas, always single pigment, English Red Deep. So I will take this English Red Deep from my 48 set that I have swatched in one of my previous videos. You see that English Red is different from Indian red usually and uh, it's more opaque but uh, I didn't find that uh, Lucas had um, a very opaque result although it's uh, claimed as an opaque color and this is uh, colder than the previous uh, colors Indian red should be slightly colder compared to English but uh, this Rubens uh, version is very warm actually so this is english red deep by lucas so the flow the dispersion of paper is not extraordinary and um, it's very intense it's very pigmented let's go to the english red light always uh, from the same 48 uh, palette the 48 uh, half pan set that I swatched. Okay, this is more like um, a warmer version of uh, English Red. It's uh, less granulating than uh, Paul Rubens. It's also not as warm as the Paul Rubens uh, English Red Light. The Paul Rubens had an orangey undertone. Whereas the English red light is warm, but not so orangey. Let's go to White Nights. The White Nights, it's in this set that I have used a lot. But in these days, I admit, I, feel, I don't feel very good using a Russian brand. So I'm finding more and more using my other European or American brands. But uh, let's try the English red from this uh, set. It wets very nicely. It's very opaque, this one, and it's very warm. White nights are usually very good uh, value for money. I was a huge fan of White Nights. I have even some new White Nights nice to review, but uh, I'm waiting until this horrible war is over before I review them. I'm just uh, not feeling like supporting any Russian brand. I'm sorry to say I don't feel good saying it, but I must be honest. Okay, so much more opaque, I would say. Of course, we must uh, wait until it dries. And um, the dispersion on paper was not so good as uh, in the first two. It's always, uh, you see, these three, English red, uh, doesn't have a very good dispersion in general. Then we go to Pozzuoli Red Ochre. I have also reviewed this uh, in one of my previous video, I 
have it in a tube but uh, use it uh, squeezed in a set uh, like this one. Oh, I haven't put water first. Not so easy to re-wet this one, but it is absolutely transparent. <laughs> I was wrong, it's not uh, um, opaque at all. Let me. It is quite transparent. It's a bit. Uh, I have the impression that it is a bit. Uh, it is a bit weak compared to the other paints uh, with this uh, pigment. Uh, I don't get all that uh, intense. Uh, strong uh, paint that I have uh, with all the other the previous one so it's a bit weaker it's very transparent but not so pigmented I have this feeling then I go to my newest favorite brand which is uh, Rosa Gallery from Ukraine this definitely gonna fill the void left by white knights rosa gallery is one of the brands that uh, use uh, pr01 for burn sienna wow yes it's wonderful and um, most brands will use uh, pbr7 for burn sienna but uh, Windsor and Newton, just as uh, Rosa Gallery, we use PR101. And it is uh, very orangey, but so warm, beautiful, full of, uh, I don't know, variation and uh, so many different values possible. I don't know, I, I'm in love with these uh, Rosa Gallery paints. And this burn sienna is one of the nicest I have seen. Let's wait until it dries, but uh, look at how beautiful. It's really a pretty color, this uh, burn sienna. Let's go to Windsor and Newton. Okay, Windsor and Newton comes in this uh, small tube. I use it in a pan, I squeeze it in a pan, but I find that Windsor and Newton doesn't be wet as well as other brands. So this time I'm going to just use it straight from the tube. Windsor and Newton is always, always beautiful paint. I, it's expensive, so I'm always looking for uh, replacements, but uh, Every time I buy Windsor & Newton, I am never, ever disappointed. So this is also a very orangey version of Burn Sienna. I will make a video where I, compa where I compare all my Burn Sienna. It's going to be fun because there are different formulas, different formulation, different pigments. And it's one of my favorite colors is one of the colors that I always have to buy and rebuy to replace the one I have finished. They very, they look very much the same. This uh, Windsor and Newton and Rosa Gallery, this Burn Sienna. Um, we are finished with the single pigments paint, and we go to two pigments paint. The first one that uh, we will swatch is Quinacridone Gold by Schminke. Schminke is using PR101 as first ingredient and then uh, they add uh, PY50, so they mix it with yellow. I don't have the tube of this paint by Schminke, but um, I have a half pan in this uh, palette that uh, I use for my sketches where I put my favorite paint. I think that this Quinacridone Gold 
it's uh, probably my favorite gold and one of my favorite colors ever. I also have a version by Sennelier with a slightly different formula and we will see it later. I have it here, but they use three pigments, so we will use it later. Then we have another two pigments paint and it's um, Indian Red by Rembrandt. This is also new and uh, I have never tried it. So I'm very curious to try this Indian Red by Rembrandt. Here it is. Rembrandt is very consistent in quality. I have never found a Rembrandt tube with the binder separation. I must say that um, today in my watercolor collection, most uh, tubes are by Rembrandt. This is incredibly opaque. So it's completely different from the Indian Red by Paul Rubens, which I liked a lot, but uh, it's not the true Indian Red for me. For me, this is a true Indian red, so opaque, just like this uh, one from uh, this one by Rembrandt. Let's water it down. You see, it is uh, colder compared to English red. So for me, this is the true Indian red, which is opaque and colder compared to English red. And this one um, mixes PR101 with uh, another red pigment, which is PR254. Then we go to Burn Sienna by Schminke. And uh, this is also new because I have bought it, but uh, never tried it, but uh, let's try it. Okay, I'm not sure I will use this one to replace the one in my palette, the one by Winsor & Newton that uh, I find wonderful. And uh, it is this one, this Burn Sienna by Winsor & Newton is wonderful. And uh, Schminke also is uh, using PR 101, like Rosa Gallery and uh, Winsor & Newton, but they add some black. Maybe it's just very little black to mute it slightly. And uh, it's very, very pigmented, but maybe I just put more paint. Let's water it down. It water, it's wonderful to water down. The dispersion is wonderful. And the result is beautiful. I think uh, I like this uh, Schminke version very, very much, which is a good thing because I have such a big tube. So I'm going to use this a lot. Then we have um, Caput Mortum by Lucas. Caput Mortum by Lucas. It's the only Caput Mortum that I've never ever had. I've always been curious to find, to try a Caput Mortum. It's in my Lucas palette. I'm curious to try some by other brands. I'm rewetting the pen. You know that Lucas rewets so easily. Just have a look at my review. Okay, this is very dark, very opaque. And uh, it's a mixture of uh, black and uh, PR101. Black is uh, the pigment 11, which is uh, black iron oxide. So the result should be granulating and uh, 
it's a uh, it's a color that I think I might use a lot in shadows, even in portraits. The name is a bit uh, horrible, Caput Mortum, which is uh, corpse head in Latin, but uh, the color is very interesting. It's almost a violet version of this PR 101. I like it. Then we have the first paint with the three pigments and it is the quinacridone gold by Sennelier. I have it in the tube because I haven't tried it uh, yet. It is this uh, beautiful tube by Sennelier. I think that Sennelier has the cutest tube ever. It's so traditional. Uh, I'm in love with Sennelier paints. And they sometimes have some binder, binder separation because of um, use honey and yes there is some separation let me massage the tube this is the problem with the, the tubes by Sennelier they often have separation yes there is some separation but the color is very nice uh, compared to the Schminke formula, they have added some more red, which is PR206. But uh, the first two pigments are exactly the same. It's a pity that maybe the binder separation doesn't give a perfect uh, swatch. Next time I will buy the half pan. It's better to buy pans by Sennelier because Sennelier have has this problem of separation, I find. And, uh, but the paints are always beautiful. So this is luminous. It glows incredibly. And uh, it's incredible that uh, PR101 is the first ingredient, but uh, still uh, the, it becomes so transparent. I'll put some more here. Okay, then we have uh, some other colors that uh, use uh, three pigments. And um, in the next four, pig four uh, colors, PR101 is not the first ingredient, but the second or maybe even um, lower in the ranking. The first one is Rosa Gallery and uh, it's uh, Mars Brown, you know. Mars Brown is usually a yellowish brown. I think that Mars indicates that uh, they're using a synthetic pigments like PY42 and PR101 are the synthetic version of uh, yellow ochre and uh, uh, red iron oxide because the natural version is PR102 as in the, for yellow ochre, the natural, ve natural version is PY43. So Mars Brown is a brown that um, it's made with synthetic pigments. At least uh, this is what uh, I have understood from my research, research on internet. So I take my beautiful Rosa Gallery set again. And this is the Mars Brown and it is actually a lovely yellowish, very transparent brown, incredible flow on paper. This, uh, if I get hold of the tube, this can become my go-to brown instead of uh, burnt amber or uh, Van Dyke brown, because it is so warm beautiful and transparent then we have then we have another color with exactly the same formula and it is um, gold ochre by lucas um, and it's made uh, exactly like the mars brown by rosa it's uh, made with the py42 pr101 and black pbk7 which is uh, Cold black. 
I take my palette, my set by Lucas, and it is this one. Let's see if, uh, no, it's very different. It's much more opaque, although the pigments, the formulation is very similar. It's opaque and duller. I sincerely prefer this uh, Mars Brown. This is like a dark uh, yellow ochre, but uh, it's not bad. But um, side by side, uh, I'm sorry to say that Lucas is not as glowing as the Mars Brown by Rosa Gallery. Then we have one of my favorite colors, and it is uh, Warm Gray by saint -Elier. And uh, it is made with um, white, PW6, uh, which is titanium white, PY42, yellow ochre. Um, a little black and PR101. PR101 is the last ingredient, so it's just a touch of it. But it's a, an opaque, warm, very light gray, which can be very useful for flowers or clouds. A sort of titanium buff, but prettier than titanium buff. This is Senelier warm gray, very pretty. And uh, the last uh, color that uh, we are swatching is uh, very surprisingly a green by Paul Rubens. Um, and it's uh, this three green and it's uh, made with uh, phthalo green, PG7, PY3, yellow, PR101 and a little black. It's a color that I like very much and I use... Uh, I like to use in my landscapes. So I, it's the first time I really noticed that uh, there is a uh, 101 inside, but um, the result is glowing and muted. It's a convenience green that uh, I find myself uh, using a lot. It's very transparent. It's made with four pigments. So the suggestion is to use it as it is, uh, without mixing it with other colors, but uh, also layering uh, gives beautiful results. Look at how beautiful it is. Okay, we let everything dry and then I'll be back for a final uh, discussion and review. Okay, now everything is dry and uh, this uh, beautiful display of uh, PR101 really makes me very happy. I think uh, that um, you maybe understand why this is one of my favorite pigments. Um, the main usage is with Indian red and the English red, but also many brands use it for burnt sienna. Uh, it's used uh, mixed with the uh, yellow for quinacridone gold and uh, mixed with other paints, uh, they give uh, a variety of browns and dockers and greys, even greens, as you see. The results uh, you see is very, very different from uh, brand to brand and uh, tube to tube, but uh, I would uh, use them all. My favorite are surprisingly the some new ones that uh, I had never tried before. The Burn Sienna by Schminke is uh, beautiful, really beautiful. And uh, also I'm really favorably surprised by the first two, which is the Transparent Red Oxide by Rembrandt and also the Indian Red by Paul Rubens, although it's not uh, a real Indian Red. Uh, it's glowing, it's very, very beautiful. The, um, this English Red Deep, which is uh, very similar to Indian uh, Red by Rembrandt, are colder and uh, they can be, for instance, uh, used in sunsets, because I think they will do a very good job in sunsets or mix with blue for gray skies. 
I also love this uh, Three Green by Paul Rubens very much uh, and The Mass Brown by Rosa Gallery. Also, the Burn Sienna by Rosa Gallery, this one, I think is one of the most beautiful Burn Sienna around. What uh, I like a little less is this uh, Gold Ochre by Lucas, although the Lucas brand uh, overall is uh, a brand that uh, I like very much and uh, has a very good uh, price point. The Sennelier Quinacridon Gold, uh, I think it's a beautiful gold, maybe even more beautiful than the Schminke, but uh, I suggest to buy it in pans and not in tubes because tubes by Sennelier always have or very often have a separation problem which really puts me down and um, I think that uh, you have some food for thought now and um, thanks for watching me for watching my video also if you are interested in my next videos don't forget to like and subscribe for the moment being a thanks very much for having watched this video and um, ciao from Italy. Bye, thank you.